I talk about legendary Nokia camera phones a lot, but why were they better than everybody else? Here are the top five reasons that made them stand out. Also a pretty good guide about what makes a phone camera great. P.S. Just a quick reminder to smash that like button because there is no other way to do it on YouTube. And also subscribe to the channel if you're liking my content. Thanks. So reason number one is custom made very large camera sensors. While these days most phone manufacturers are pretty much sharing the exact same sensors across similar segments, Nokia back in the day used to have their own custom-built, custom-made sensors specifically for their flagship devices and sometimes even for their mid-rangers. These custom-built sensors would not be found on any other competing devices. Take for example the custom-made 1 over 1.2 inch massive camera sensor found on the Nokia 808 PureView, which by the way still remains as the biggest camera sensor to be ever put on a phone. Then there is the huge 1 over 1.83 inch sensor found on the Nokia N8, for example. For comparison's sake, the iPhone 4 at the time had a 1 over 3.2 inch sensor, which was much smaller than the one found on the N8. Then there's, of course, the 1 over 2.5 inch sensor found on the Lumia 1520. What you need to understand is larger camera sensors can capture more light, much better dynamic range, as well as better bokeh, aka that background blur you find on very cool looking images. They are the equivalent of large car engines. And as we all know, thanks to Vin Diesel, there is no replacement for displacement. Oh, and don't mistake megapixels for sensor size. You can have a huge sensor with tiny megapixels, and you can also have a tiny sensor with many megapixels. The key is to balance between these two, and Nokia had pretty much the perfect balance. The second reason is Nokia had crazy attention to detail to all the elements that are within the sensor itself. The number two reason is attention to detail to every aspect about the camera sensor. A large camera sensor isn't complete without excellent specifications to back it up. And Nokia paid a lot of attention to that. They were innovators when it comes to adopting large apertures. For example, the Lumia 920 from 2012 had an aperture of f2.0. The industry standard at the time was an aperture of 2.4, which was found on the iPhone. To simplify things for you, aperture is the size of the opening for the camera. So a larger aperture means that your phone camera can capture more light. Nokia was also using Zeiss optics on their flagship devices. And Zeiss are the masters of creating a very clean optical lens for the camera. This helps with the clarity of the images as well as trying to minimize light refractions. So the end result is a sharper looking image. Reason number three is imaging algorithms. Great camera hardware is nothing without excellent imaging algorithms. And Nokia was also ahead of the pack in that aspect too. Nokia's imaging algorithms prioritized realism and a balanced looking image over oversaturated images and overexposed pictures. And with PureView technology, they went even a step further by trying to combine five pixels into one pixel. So end up with a very noise-free looking, very pure pixel. They also implemented impressive noise reduction algorithms. And even when they implemented HDR, they gave the users the control over how much HDR they want in an image. These days, imaging algorithms are the difference between a good camera phone and an excellent one. For proof of how important that is, just look at what Google is doing with their Pixel lineup and contrast that to what Samsung is doing with their excellent camera hardware and then very mediocre algorithms. The fourth reason is the camera interface. Amazing technology would be pointless if you can't perfectly utilize it. And Nokia understood that early on. They were on the forefront of camera interface innovations and understood the need for balancing between simplicity as well as giving the users professional control. For example, on the Nokia 808 PureView, they gave you the option to have three predefined settings that you can jump straight into for capturing the best image. So you didn't have to always go into the camera and play around with the settings to get the perfect image. 
and this has yet to be copied by competitors even today. And of course, who can forget the impressive UI on the Lumia 1020's camera? It allowed manual controls to be easily understood and utilized even by the average user. And for me, it's still the gold standard when it comes to camera UX. In fact, I think the tutorial on the Lumia 1020's camera is one of the reasons that I really got into photography and videography. Reason number five, which is last, but definitely not least, was innovation. I know how much of a cliche this term currently is, especially in the tech sphere. Every company does the most mundane thing and calls it innovation. But Nokia back in the day was actually different from introducing optical image stabilization, which completely changed the game when it comes to low light photography, as well as video stability, to helping improve xenon flash and making it as compact as possible, offering the world's first six elements lens for image clarity, introducing a variable aperture for different lighting conditions, offering lossless zoom thanks to utilizing a huge camera sensor, offering the first raw imaging solution on a smartphone, to creating the first sensor which doesn't get affected by different aspect ratio. So the images captured in 4x3 or 16x9 won't have any loss of quality. I think you get the idea. Nokia used to be the biggest innovator in the realm of imaging. They were always trying to push the envelope. Since their exit out of the smartphone market in 2014, the focus has been by everybody on trying to improve the software and hardware innovations have almost completely stopped to a crawl. So these are the five reasons why Nokia made the best camera phones. I have a question for you actually. There is one manufacturer these days that is loosely following in Nokia's footsteps when it comes to imaging. Can you guess which one it is? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Anyways, that's it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.